Hi and welcome to Dusty Book Sniffers. I'm Nicole and today we are here for my thoughts and there's lots of them, confusing thoughts about Demon Theory by Stephen Graham Jones. Good morning, good evening everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I made it. I finished uh, the book. I'm so happy I finished the book and you will hear all of my thoughts through the journey through part one, two and three. They are a little bit jumbled. I will admit it is... <laughs> I've, re I've looked it back and I must say I, I do sound like a rambling idiot but anyway these are my thoughts they are pure raw in the moment thoughts about the book and um yeah so hopefully you enjoy it I had a great time in doing this and I just I, I would just like to say thank you so much Amanda for inviting me along to the Stephen Graham Jones month I've thoroughly enjoyed my time I'm still catching up on a lot of videos because I've had a lot of stuff going on I'm still catching up on all the videos in the playlist and I am looking forward to seeing what other people have said about books and all the rest of sorry about the motorbike I just went fast we have a couple of motorbikes here they're super super loud so sorry um yeah so i am looking forward to seeing everybody's uh videos and um yeah so let's get into my thoughts okay so i uh, as you know i am reading demon theory by stephen graham jones and this is the second book that i have read for his this one is actually like 440 pages and from what i can tell it's broken up into three parts I think maybe um I think it said yeah three parts so I've just read the first part of it and it is very bizarre like really bizarre I have really struggled with this first section um which is around about 25 percent of the book because I'm reading it on uh, Kindle and it doesn't have page numbers as such. But I mean, I could work it out. But I'm probably about 120 pages, 130 pages in. So it's like, I don't even know how to describe this. So I mentioned to Amanda, who organized this um, Stephen Graham Jones month. I'm on the 29th, so the second last day of June. And this one is taking, is taking me a long time to read. I basically started it pretty much after I started the, the Night of the Mannequins and it is re I'm really, really struggling with it. <clears throat> so as I said, I've read the first part. I'm about to go into the second part. Um, I am going to basically sit here until it is read. I'm not reading any other book until I get this done because it's actually doing my head in. It is really confusing. And as I said, I'm reading the first part. Now, from what I can gather, there's three parts and I think it's set up like a movie because it's written like a movie script. And so you've got all these footnotes after like something will be said and then there'll be a footnote and it'll give you some information about, you know, for instance, there is a song playing The Devil Inside by NXS. It'll give you the the bit about that. And so <laughs> I'm really confused. Can you tell? <laughs> so at this point in time, I'm about to start the second part. I'm not sure what is going on. I'm not sure who is alive, who is dead, who is now a ghost. Who? <laughs> I don't think there are ghosts in there, but they're talking about demons and angels and and like there's these they're med, med students. Basically, it, the book starts with um, a group of med students that are at a party. And um, he gets a phone call from his mother who is a diabetic and she needs insulin. So then it cuts to a scene where they're at the hospital, they're getting insulin and, and all that sort of stuff. And then they drive out to his mother's house. And when they arrive there, she's not there. And so then the story just flows on from there. But I'm, I'm really confused to where the mother is. And then they're like... I think Hale was on the phone, which is one like that's his his house where he's at, and he's on the phone, but there's no one there, so it's very psychoish, you know, Norman Bates type thing, and so <laughs> I'm really confused. Can you tell? So I thought that I would talk about each part as I do it because I am so confused by the book. 
So, uh, as I said, there's a group of uh, six, I think, six med students, and they've gone out to this house. There's something there. It's a, and it's, and it's written in a way of like, there's abbreviations in it and stuff like that, like it probably would be in a script. So EXT is exterior, um, you know, POV, point of view. And then it's also, and it's taught like it's written like that, like it's a movie script, like, and it's a director's movie script. So, so basically, you know, when a director tells you, you know, pan the camera this way for the point of view from such and such and, and all the rest of it. Um, and there's lots of references to different slasher movies and stuff like that. Or, you know, like it'll say a one liner where it'll say something about the babysitter, you know, the, the quintessential babysitter in the house by herself, the house that she doesn't know. And so something, you know, is coming up behind. So there's all this creepy shit happening in this book. And, um, it's frustrating the hell out of me because I'm not getting what the story is about. Like, I get that they're at this house. I get that there's something creepy. I freaking don't know what the creepiness is. But now that I'm reading a little bit further and I knew nothing about this book when I went into it, I purely picked it from the cover because I know nothing about Stephen Graham Jones's catalogue or anything like that. So I have picked both books purely by the cover and the name had a little bit to do with a demon theory. Um, so I knew it was going to be like probably in depth, but I didn't realize it was going to be this confusing. So <laughs> I am struggling with the way it's written, I think, most of all. Not so much the storyline because sometimes when you read horror stories, not always, but sometimes when you read a horror story, it can be a little bit blasé. I mean, you only have to, if you're not a reader of horror and you've watched horror movies, you know, there is a little bit of guessing and, you know, trying to work out what the hell's going on because people are just dropping dead everywhere. You know, like there's a bit of that happening, but I'm really struggling with the style of writing it being in a script with the abbreviations and the footnotes because that's taking up a lot of my time because I keep pressing on the footnotes, which is another page to read, and I still haven't got off that page, and I've only got a sentence into that page. So it's like <laughs> it's almost like the first one. I've already read three novels because I've read all the fo footnotes. <laughs> so in the next part, I don't know what it looks like yet. I don't know whether it's continuing writing that way or not. So in the next part, I'm not going to click on all the footnotes unless, of course, I really can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> so the second part of it is called De uh, Demon Theory 17. The first one I think was called Demon Theory 16. And I'll have to, I'll verify all that at the end. There was mention of that, um, but I'm really confused. Like I don't know. So it's cut and it says fade out, um, fading out to roll the credits and that's how the part one has finished. And I'm like, so who's still alive? Because the two people that were mentioned in the last few paragraphs, I thought they died ages ago. <laughs> so I'm really confused. Um, like Amanda said that if I wanted to, because she's read the book before, and Amanda said to me, you know, like if you want to go over uh, to Discord, we can discuss it over in Discord if you're not understanding something. But I don't want to do that because I think that that's going to take away from my honest opinion of the book. So that, and that's the whole point of this is to get my, because I've never read him before. This is to get my reaction to reading, um, Stephen Graham Jones. And I'm, I'm like, I'm frustrated, but I'm liking it at the same time, but I'm still really, really <laughs> confused. Um, either I'm just not getting it and I'm a little bit dunce this week, or this is a really confusing book. So um, I think that I will just, as I'm reading it, if I'm not understanding something, so you're just going to go on for the journey, um, on the journey for this. <laughs> so I'm going to continue on now and I'll check in when I've read the second part. Okay, so I'm updating Demon Theory by Stephen Graham Jones. I sat up late last night and read the second part of it. And so I have finished that. So I'm now officially halfway through the book. I'm still confused. But this time, so, okay. So I have definitely worked out that there are three parts to this book, okay? It does say that it is a trilogy um, as a movie. It's written like as a movie and yeah, anyway. <laughs> oh. 
I am super, super confused and getting super, super frustrated with this book. I so just want to DNF it, but because I'm part of the read along, I'm going to persevere. I am only 50% through and the date today is the 15th. I still have a few days to go. So I've still got about two weeks. Before. Well, I've, I've probably got about 11 days before I have to um, film and, and wrap it all up. So I am going to push through again tonight and get as much as I can read of it. And then I might just have to put it down for a little while and step away from it. So what I'm learning about this book is that yes, it is confusing. Yes, it is a good story. Yes, I am intrigued. Um, this time, um, so I think I said in my last uh, little update about it that they were out on a farm or like a, and a house in the middle of nowhere and there was a snowstorm and all the rest of it and then it ended on a cliffhanger. I'm not sure if I said that or not, but it ended on a cliffhanger and it had the credits rolling out. So it's it's a, it's sort of set out like a, I guess like a director's cut, I would probably say. I don't know. I don't know nothing about film or anything like that. But um, yeah, so basically this one has also ended the same as well. So it's got to a point and then um, it's just fading out and all the rest of it. So from what I can gather, <laughs> I'm probably totally wrong. I think they are gargoyles that are trying to get these people. <laughs> I think. There is a few references of gargoyles. As I said, I am super confused. Any other time I would have already DNF'd this book. Um, Amanda did say to me that um, I picked, the two books that I picked were his most confusing and he and this one is really, it's hard work. So as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of footnotes and all the rest of it. I pretty much don't have to press on the footnotes now. I've grown up with all of the stuff that he's referring to anyway. So as soon as something is said, I sort of know what movie he's referring to. Most of the things are referred to movies and or um, things that are, are like quotations and stuff like that. He gives you all that information. All I can say is like those footnotes alone the knowledge that this guy must have like in his brain about all those things. I know he can do research and all the rest of it, but to be just writing a story and then throw in a comment about something and then put a footnote into it or like back to where that quote come from or that reference came from and all the rest of it, like amazing just on that premise alone. Um, is it making me not like him and think that maybe his um, his other stuff is really confusing like this? No, because I have heard from different people that these two books, as, as along with Amanda, these two books are probably he, the, the book that I'm reading right now, not necessarily The Night of Mannequins, but this, this one that I'm reading right now is pretty hard. Now, I am two sections through a three-part section a uh, three-part book and so I'm already I think up to like 300 280 maybe I don't know footnotes so it's like a the footnotes are almost like a book on their own I, I don't I don't even want to look how many footnotes are as I said I, I pretty much am getting the reference points and stuff like that so I don't necessarily have to click on any of that and there's none of like um, the abbreviations that I've noticed um, as much as there were in the first one. So this middle section is a little less confusing, but I still don't know who's alive and who's not. Because who I thought died in the first one turned up in the second one, but some of them were flashbacks. And I'm thinking that are like the way I'm starting to perceive it from through all the confusion and frustration with this book, um, I'm thinking it's it's like, it's a little bit like um, Freddy Krueger vibe, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm super confused, but I am enjoying it. I I'm actually, even though I'm getting, I'm confused by by the book, and it is a lot of hard work. I am really happy with all the footnotes and all the rest of it. It's given me an appreciation for what he's done in this book. Um, now I have gone and done a little bit of research. I have avoided spoilers and stuff like that, but um, it has been said in a couple of reviews of this book 
um, that the physical copy is a lot better than the digital copy. Now, I couldn't get my hands on a physical copy, and it's an out-of-print book, I believe. So it's not being printed anymore. It's not available on audio, um, although you wouldn't be able to listen to this on audio with all the footnotes and all the rest of it. It would be it, it would be a hundred times more confusing than that. Um, I'm not having too much trouble. Like, there's been some reviews that had, like, they were having trouble with the footnotes. Oh, in the edition that I've got on Kindle, it may have been updated since then because they were quite old um, reviews. Because this was published, this this story came about in 2006, so 15 years ago. Um, because that's well, yeah, 2006 was when Nerali was born. So and she's she's almost 16, so it's almost 16 years old. So um, yeah, I am finding it. I am going to persevere, and I will check in and have my final thoughts and all the rest of it after I've read the third part <laughs> I'm hoping that it all comes together at the end so apparently the digital copy copy is not as good as having the physical copy and um, I'm guessing that Stephen Graham Jones wasn't very popular in our country here in Australia and I cannot find um, a physical copy would I read it again I don't know if I could get hold of a physical copy I probably would so I could annotate because this is definitely a book that you would want to annotate the absolute bejesus out of um as far as the story going being horrific or um scary or anything like that it is uh, it is scary like it has scary moments in it um and it is definitely horror based like it, it's definitely of the genre of like um, slasher films and, and stuff like that and um, I am like that part of the story and the middle section of the story so far I have enjoyed a lot more than the first part but the first part needed to happen to set up for the second part as it does in like slasher movies and stuff like that um, it does have like um, supernatural theme like uh, that's why I'm getting like a Freddy Krueger vibe from it like because in this one there was like coma patients and things were happening so I may have missed something because I did walk away from the book a couple of times so I may have missed the connection somewhere because I've had a break and normally like there's no chapters so I, I'm just continuing on reading so I'm reading there's no chapters on the digital copy so I don't know if it's, there's chapters in the um in the physical copy but in the digital one there is no chapter break so I basically am just reading and I'll stop when I need to give myself a break and then I'll walk away from it and I'm thinking that I may be like sometimes I might be missing but I can't sit down like I do have to do other things pick up kids and stuff like that so I haven't been able to um, un until last night I wasn't able to sit down and give it a good bash so I believe I've got about three and a half to four hours left of reading I may end up smashing it out tonight and just getting it over and done with but I'm gonna give it a good bash because as I said I'm about 50% through and I'm still confused as ever although without giving too many spoilers away I do know I think I do know what's going on with Hale's sister now still don't know where the mother is <laughs> I don't know whether she's back or not and there was a bit of a scene in here and I'm thinking oh my god if this is stepping into the mind of Stephen Graham Jones holy hell I would hate to be in his head like he must have just so much stuff going around in his head um and he's trying to get it out on paper and just like the footnotes alone on that and I I will let you know how many footnotes because they're all numbered and stuff like so they're all numbered throughout the book and you on on the digital copy you click on it um and you've got the footnote there so yeah <laughs> I, I like this is my honest opinion of this book if you are thinking that you're just going to pick up demon theory and you're just going to read it from cover to cover and go on your merry way forget it that is this is not that book this book is like this book would be given as homework to someone and you need to take your time with this book and you need to have it in the physical copy and take tons of notes which is something that I am not doing I am just reading it as I would normally read a book this is not that not a book that you can do that with you've got a book within a book because the footnotes some of them might be only a couple of lines and then others are like a full page so you're almost getting 
you know a whole book in in footnotes and there is a lot because as I said I'm up to 200 and something now or 100 and something I don't know I'm, I'm up to it no I'm up to 200 and something so there is a lot of footnotes in this and this book is only 440 pages and I'm only 50% through and normally I can I can read in a 24 hour period I can read you know 400 pages quite easily and I'm struggling with this book just because of the amount of content that is in it and the confusion of it all. But I am loving what I'm understanding and what I'm getting and it is starting to become a bit clearer. I am enjoying the story. Like there's some moments where it's like, run, run! <laughs> you know, like you do with a, with a slasher film. So yeah, anyway, that's part two. I'm still confused, but I am finding it a little bit easier to read because I think I've got used to the style of um, of his writing style for this particular book and I have been told that not all his books are like this. Some of his earlier stuff is quite confusing I, I have been told because I've asked a couple of people if all his books were like this because if all his books are like this he is going to be a hard work author and I need to get physical book books not digital and I am still able to take notes and stuff like that with the digital format but I just don't think it's as, as, it's not as easy as it would be having a highlighter and just going, right, I need to highlight this, I need to put a tab on it and stuff like that. It probably is easier, but I, I don't do that. I'm, I very rarely take notes. I did take a couple of notes of who's alive and who I thought died and who's alive and who's not alive now and who's come into the story because we've had more people come into the story from the first like they were in the first one but only a brief comment because they were part of the scene but this time they're heavy, more heavily in the the scenes and the, we're not at the farm or at the, I, I'm assuming it's a farmhouse because it's in the middle of nowhere so I'm just gonna say that we're not at Hale's mother's house anymore we're back at the hospital and there's some gruesome stuff happening night but I'm liking it. I'm loving it. I forgot how much I love horror. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm an eclectic reader. I read everything. I don't have one favorite um, genre and you know it can and then I might have a genre where I hit it hit it really hard and then I won't read any of it for 12 months or whatever. So yeah I read a lot of different genres and I forgot how much I like horror because I can't watch the movies. My husband doesn't like them and so you know, and I don't like to watch horror movies by myself because I get all jittery then. <laughs> so anyway, hey everybody, I'm back. I have finally finished Demon Theory and all I can say is, whoa, it was hard work. It was hard work, but I am so happy that I continued on with it and I got to the end and I read the three parts. Um, it was, as, as you just heard, it was somewhat confusing for me. Um, but I think that that was more on me than it was on the actual book because now that I've finished all three parts, I think it's absolutely a fabulous book. Like, I really enjoyed it. I think that I will actually reread it and when I'm not so much under the pump to get it done because this was for, um, as you know, it was for the month of uh, Gra uh, Stephen Graham Jones and um, I probably... Yeah, I would probably read it again. So that's got to say something. I've given it a four star rating. Um, I'm not going to give it a five star rating because I don't, I don't think that that would be a fair. Like it would, I'm sure Stephen Graham Jones would love a five star rating. But in my opinion, I don't think it's a five star read. It is a four star read, and the only reason that it was a four star read for me was because of the footnotes. I truly believe that the footnotes are what made this book. As far as the storyline goes, you know, it's a, a movie type scenario that you're reading about. And so it was, <coughs> excuse me, so it was a little bit, well, as you can see from my other snippets of this blog, it was a little bit confusing for me and whatnot. But as I said, that I think that that was more on me, that I was struggling with the writing style and all the rest of it, because quite honestly, I have never read anything like that before. And so it made it very difficult to get used to. And by the time I got to the second book, I was used to the writing. I was well aware of the, um, of the footnotes and all the rest of it. I did continue pressing on the footnotes through all of them. And there was 400 and six in the end but as I said 
I think it's the footnotes that made this a four-star read for me because I just think the amount of knowledge that was in this book from movies, books, m music, you name it, there was something you know there was something that he just linked these throwaway comments to now obviously there's a lot of research that would have went into it and um whatnot but still to be able to write that book and then just be able to link that back to a movie book or or a song and most of them all linked back to movies throughout our um <coughs> our viewing time you know <laughs> like just everything I, like, I just whew, it was just a lot in the end but um i really liked how the book wrapped up i liked how the third part wrapped up i i was a lot happier with the book once i had finished it i don't know whether that's because it was good or because i had finished it but i was a i was very aware that um i yeah i just i don't know how to put it into words it is such a was written in such a unique way that like i said i've never read anything from him before and to delve into this novel for the first one it's an old one too like it's from 2006 and you can't as i said before you can't get it in the physical copy it will not hear anyway in australia i can't find it anywhere but um yeah i i'm i'm glad that i chose it like even though amanda said to me that you know i, I picked one of his most i'm i'm glad that i picked it as a child as as the book because it did challenge me as a reader <laughs> and when I finished it I come out and did a victory lap around the house yes I've finished it but you know like when you've got a book that's got 406 footnotes in the horror genre and it all links back to movies and all the rest of it it's freaking amazing so if you haven't read this I would I suggest that you do read it and give it a go just persevere with it take your time with it make it a time when you've got plenty of time to read it because I think that you will thoroughly enjoy it and just know that if you get the digital um I didn't have any problems like I've, I've as I said I've read a lot of reviews where people were saying they were having problems with the footnotes and whatnot I just clicked on the number and it popped up so I'm guessing um considering they were old reviews that it's probably um been updated and fixed and all those problems are fixed because there was no review on Kindle saying that there was problems with it or anything like that so none that I've seen anyway um but I did leave a my thoughts on uh, Goodreads which I don't normally leave any notes or anything under there and this is basically what I had to say as a new reader of Stephen Graham Jones I love this in the book in the end but wow it has been a journey I ha I admit that it was hard work but I am glad that I persevered and finished it because I almost dnf'd it several times the writing style was a bit jarring but I think um that was just me by the time the second part I got to the second part I was okay and I got into the flow of the book what I love the most about this book is the footnotes all 406 of them so much information and I loved it and it's well worth the read so that is my very first um <laughs> time I've actually written any anything about a book or what I thought about a book um, so that is there I also put that you can see the link for this um, this video there as well so um, you know a little bit of shameless plugging for the channel <laughs> But I just want to say thank you so much, Amanda, for pushing me out of my comfort zone and not saying, oh, they might be a bit, um, you know, tricky for you considering you've never read anything before. So I just love the fact that you didn't do that. And uh, you told me after the fact, <laughs> which was great. Um, and I am so glad that I didn't D DNF it. So thank you so much, Amanda, for um, putting this together. I've had a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to reading a couple more of his, although I think I will do them on audio because um, if they're if they're hard work like this one I don't know how I'll go I might end up ding and effing him but at the end of the day I will um definitely read more of his works and uh yeah so that is it from me today I do hope that uh you enjoyed this little review and seeing my journey through this book um if you did like this video today give it a thumbs up down below don't forget to hit that like button and um also leave me a comment and tell me what books that you should you think I should read next all right that's it for me today have a great day everybody and I'll see you all again soon bye for now